Crypto's been taking a beating in the marketplace lately, and a lot of savvy investors are making the decision or have already made the decision to move their gains to something safer. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV. It's where I help investors like you invest your money, build your wealth, grow your net worth in real estate. All right? And the man I'm working with today, I love this guy. My man, Gene Vester, you're out there in Jersey. You work a day job, a hardworking blue-collar cat. You also do some day trading. You've invested some money, and you made a lot of money in the crypto game. But what I really love about you is you're a fucking savvy-ass dude, bro. You know that that's a high-risk game. You know there's, there's a lot going on there. And what you did is you're like, dude, I want to move some of this money into something a little bit more low-risk, something I could set myself up for for the long haul. Smart. Not just some people, they just they, they ride their wins. They get too cocky, right? They think that the market's just going to keep going up and up and up and up, and then boom! Just goes down and they get hit, right? Not you, Gene. You're a smart guy. You know what's up, right? And your biggest thing is low-risk investment properties, dude. You don't want crazy Section 8, uh, multifamily, low, uh, low uh, <clears throat> neighborhood grade, high-risk areas, right? You're like, dude, give me that B-grade stuff, maybe high C stuff. I prefer cash versus Section 8 tenants. I want to keep my risks low, keep my exposure low. I love that, right? That's what's good about... Uh, being an investor, right? You could dabble in ultra high risk stuff over here, but you got to balance it out with low risk stuff over here. And that can't speak to uh, how much I like you for all that uh, enough, Gene. I'm I'm just really proud of you, and I uh, just think you just got a good head on your shoulders, right? Because sometimes I dabble in super high risk investments, right? But I balance them out with low risk investments, right? You can't always go balls to the wall and always go ultra high risk, right? But you can't never take a risk, right? It's all about balance. And you got that, brother. And the property I got for you today, I think that's going to do just that. I think it's a great balance in a neighborhood that does work for Section 8 but also works for cash, does work for those investors uh, who want higher returns, but it's also low enough risk to where it's very easily manageable and predictable so let's jump into those numbers after this commercial break hey lenders are you looking to be part of our referral program if so send us an email at sales at holtonwise.com <laughs> welcome back let's jump into the numbers on today's property okay i like this one quite a bit 12103 Longmead, Cleveland, 44135. Been on the market about three weeks. Priced at 80K. I think that is a solid price. I believe we are going to have to pay every bit as much as 80K to take this one down. This is a solid deal. Now, it's got a tenant already in there. They are a cash paying tenant, okay? It's really pretty much two types of tenants you can get. You can get cash paying tenants, you can get Section 8 tenants, okay? Now, in regards to the types of tenants that I like better or don't like or this or that, it is very much a moving scale, okay? If you get into the higher-risk neighborhoods, I default to going, dude, you got to go Section 8. Section 8's where it's at. So if we're in like a D-grade neighborhood, Section 8. If you're in an F-class neighborhood, the only thing that's reasonable is Section 8. If you're in an A-grade neighborhood, it's probably owner occupants. You're probably not looking to buy rental properties there. Then you get into B and C grade neighborhoods. And it can be kind of 50 50, right? Section 8 has its pros, cash has its pros, right? I would say if you're in a B grade neighborhood, lean towards cash, but I do like Section 8 quite a bit. C grade neighborhood, lean towards Section 8, but I do like cash quite a bit, right? You got options. This is right in the middle of a B and C, right? I would say this is one of the nicer. Little streets and blocks and little areas in an overall C-grade neighborhood. And by the way, if you're like, dude, 
this is great, dog, but what the fuck is a B neighborhood, a D neighborhood? I don't even know what you're talking about. Google the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods. Check the show notes below. Go to HoltonLights.com. Check the tools and resource tab. I wrote up this blog probably like five or six years ago, right? Uh, it's, it's helped thousands and thousands and thousands of people navigate the Cleveland market, right? I graded every neighborhood on an A to F scale uh, based upon risk and giving you guys expectations. And even though the blog is five or six years old, it's a living document. So I update it frequently, right? So uh, when pricing changes, because that's what happens, right? We're in 2021 right now. Real estate in 2021 costs more money than real estate in 2015. Real estate in 2015 costs more money than real estate in 2012, right? That's just the nature of the beast. Ten years from now, pricing might be different, right? So I update it to keep it uh, current and giving you guys the kind of information uh, and details you need to make investment decisions, right? So this would be a high C, right? Maybe even a low B, right? Solid neighborhood. Now, as far as market rent goes, because see right there, you saw the pictures, right? Just cruising through them. We'll pick them up again, right? Just so you can see, right? It's a little messy, right? You got trampoline and kids' toys and stuff in the yard. And, you know, you, you got just stuff in the house, right? Just people are living there, right? So we already got an existing tenant in there, right? So it's, you know, it's not showing amazingly or anything like that, but that's what the rental game is, man. That's what it looks like uh, to, to rent homes to, uh, you know, moderately income uh producing folks man that's what it looks like it's not necessarily the grandmas but that that's the life okay that's the life you're signing up for that tenant they're paying eight and a quarter plus water so they're paying around 900 which is very close to market market for this is actually about a thousand a month right that's what we typically see right so after taking this over we want to work to increase that tenant's rent slowly we don't want to kick them out we don't want to make them move out so we don't have to do uh, a turnover but we do want to get them up to a thousand eventually right we'll get them up to a thousand I anticipate after normal fixed and variable expense estimates of performance, you'd make approximately $5,725 a year. As far as financing goes, that's why I love the investment space, guys. You put down one-fourth, bank puts down three-fourths. You put down 20 k bank puts down 60 k That would net out to be a cash-on-cash -cash return projection of 13.5%, right? You invest $20,000 cash, get a safe modest investment kicking off 13 and a half percent return that's why people are coming from all around the world to invest in cheap markets like this because you can't do this in most markets in the usa thanks for watching subscribe to holton wise tv for more financial information education and entertainment